another proudly we hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours starring Lee Tracy and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. What's our play about, Lee? Well, we have a highly dramatic story, Ken, entitled Straight and Level, a story about a man's conflict within himself, a story of his struggle to make a decision that affects his whole life. I believe it'll make for excellent listening. We'll begin right after your important message. The United States Air Force needs veterans of any service with training in such fields as radio, radar, aircraft maintenance, weather, photography, and many others. If you can qualify, you can now enlist in your old grade or better. For full details, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Ken, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Straight and Level. <laughs> Fly free, to follow the sun and chase the stars, to soar skyward and dwell in the lofty cloud worlds of upper space, to join the eagle and touch the hand of greatness with wings. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Murdoch. Ah, it's all right, Doc. Well, let's have it. Well, there's no point in my trying to soften the blow. You'll have to give it up. I see. All of it? Most of it. The testing, certainly. You can fly for your own pleasure if you like, but nothing fancy. Oh. Straight and level, huh? That's right. Straight and level. Well, what is it I got it or I haven't got? It? In its simplest terms, your body is worn out, particularly your heart. It's taken too much punishment for too long. You've been in this game for a long time, and from your record and from what I've read about you, a large part of your flying has been on the rugged side, testing. It's caught up to you. Just like that? No, not just like that. But my last physical, uh, I was fine. What's happened has happened suddenly, but it was a gradual wearing down. Suppose I took it easy for a while. Suppose that no, I... No, the damage is done. But don't take my word for it alone. Go see another doctor. I'll give you the name of several. I you? guess I'll take your word for it. <laughs> you see, you're the fifth I've been to in the past week. Hi, Ken. Oh, what's the matter? Sally's night out? No, I haven't been home yet. Anything wrong? With this baby? I should say not. I was just checking her over. Tomorrow's going to be a big day. You ought to hit the sack. Yeah. The weather looks like it might get rough. Front coming in from the east. <laughs> you should have been a meteorologist. Here, hold this. Ah, oh, she's a bird. She's what you dream about all your life. And you're the lucky stiff that gets to fly her. I slave over her like she was a hot stove. And you, you lug, you take her up there and make her purr. Maybe I should have been the mechanic. They can't ever take what you've got away from you. Hmm? I don't get you. Uh, uh, skip it. You ever notice uh, the smell a plane has? Any plane. Gets deep down in you. Can't get it out. Hey, what have you been doing? Guzzling beer? No, no. I, I'm just getting soft, I guess. I keep thinking about all the flights and all the planes behind us. And this is what they've led to. Yeah. Uh, shine that light down here. Yeah, we've seen a lot change, Ken. From Jenny's to this. But let's not cry in our soup about it. We'll see a lot more before we're put out to pasture. Okay, Mac. Just got me all of a sudden. Doesn't it ever get you? Well, sure, but there isn't any point in making it sound like a sad story. Uh, fasten that cowling there. Yeah. Ah, uh, 
Guess I'll go home. Well, if I had a gal like Sally to go home to, don't think I'd be spending my nights with this hunk of baling wire. Oh, the heck you wouldn't. You couldn't live in a house that didn't look like a hanger. And if you had a wife, she'd You leave to... the woman I haven't got out of this and go home, will you? Tomorrow's the final flight test. If she comes through that like she has the others, we've sold ourselves a plane. You mean Con Aircraft has. They'll get a lovely contract out of this. And we'll get a lovely bonus, especially you. Yeah. Yeah, especially me. Is that you, Ken? Hi, kid. Sorry I'm late. I have to see a guy. I've got your supper in the oven. Well, I'm not very hungry. What's the matter? Don't you feel well? No, 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 no. I feel fine. I just got, uh, got a lot on my mind. Oh. Well, you just sit down and put your feet up, and I'll get you a sandwich and a glass of milk. Mmm. That sounds good. How'd the tax go today? Fine. Perfect. She's a honey. Is tomorrow the last one? Ken. Hmm? What? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. What? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow's the last one. Ken, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong, I tell you. You can't fool me, even if you won't tell me. Look, Sally, can a guy be tired? Can a guy have a lot on his mind without having something wrong? Are you going to get me that sandwich? Yes, I'll get it. But there's no need to snap at me. Oh. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you how much. Can't you sleep? Mm-hmm. Want me to get you an aspirin? Mm-mm, no. No, thanks. I think I'll get up and smoke a cigarette. My nerves are kind of wound up, I guess. You forget you're not a kid any longer. No, I, I don't forget that. Well, Chuck Henderson had better give you a good long vacation when this job is done. Yeah, we'll go lie in the sun. Ken, Ken, don't you think it's time we started thinking about the future? You're still a young man as far as average standards go. But I'm in a business where there aren't average standards. Is that what you mean? Well, yes, you know it is. I'm an old man in the air, and the air is for the young. Don't be silly. You're not old. But you can't go on testing all the rest of your life. You've got to give it up sometime. That's right. Give it up while I'm still healthy. Give it up before I go into a dive I can't pull out of. A man with your experience could get a good job on the ground. Chuck would find a place for you. A man with my experience can't work on the ground. You can grow away from the earth. I, I live up there. And I live here with you. And I'm second best. No, no, that's not so. You're, you're part of it. Uh, I'm not very good at explaining... You go to sleep. I'll go smoke my cigarette. All wrapped up. If I told her, after tomorrow, I'll have to tell her. I'll have to tell them all. Tell Henderson and tell Mac and... But not before it's done. She's my baby and I'll see her through to the finish. <laughs> what a way to finish it. What a way. Straight and level. Straight and level. Straight and level. Now, one of the first things to get into your head, Murdoch, is that if you want to learn to fly, you've got to learn to keep her straight and level. Notice your wing there in relation to the horizon. Notice the angle. All right, correct it. Ah, that's too much. Okay, now check your nose. Get the idea, Murdoch? That's it. Keep her straight and level. You're the guy who's going to test this bird? That's right. Done much testing? Some. She's plenty hot. Tricky. The other boys don't like her. I like her. She looks sweet. Looks like she wants to get off the ground. My name is Jack McDonald. Everybody calls me Mac. I'm Ken Murdoch. Everybody calls me Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Been flying long? No, not as long as I'd like, and not as long as I'm going to. Well, you're kind of young, aren't you, Ken? I don't see any gray beard on you. <laughs> well, I don't have to take them up there. I just have to see if they get there. Well, I'll trust you if you trust me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she should fly straight and level anyway. Oh, you're a test pilot, huh? 
That's right. I take Sam up and see what they'll do. Mm, sounds romantic. <laughs> it is. Have you been doing it for long? Mm, on and off, about five years now. Flew the mail for a while, did a little instructing and uh, stunt flying with the circus. Well, was that big man you were with the pilot, too? No, no, that was Mac. He's a mechanic. Oh. Isn't another one like him. <laughs> I seem to be asking a lot of questions. Ah, it shows you're interested. It's curious. I've never met a pilot before. Mm, I've never met a pretty girl like you before. <laughs> What do you what do you say we get acquainted? Oh, you're awfully fresh. <laughs> hey, uh, how, how would how would you like to go up there, see those clouds? That's never never land. You can go and look, you can't stay. Not like this world. Nobody there, but the wind. You lose the earth. Would you really take me up? Oh, you bet I would. <laughs> I think I'd be frightened. No, no, you wouldn't be frightened. I can see it in your eyes. You, well, you won't do any stunting, will you? Ah, <laughs> uh, don't worry. I'll keep her straight and level. You wanted to see me, Chuck? Yes, Ken. Sit down, will you? I had a talk with Marvin. He thinks he's about ready. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Looked her over? But all yesterday and most of this morning with Mac, should be able to start taxiing tests for the end of this week. She's the hottest thing we've ever developed. She's all airplane. All jet. Ken, you've been chief test pilot for me with time out for the war for um, 12 years. That's right. Any complaints? Well, under one. I'm the best in the business for my money. But Ken, let's not kid ourselves. You're no spring chicken anymore. So? So... What about letting one of the younger boys do the tests? Are you kidding? I'm just as fit as any one of those kids, and I've forgotten more about this game than he'll ever know. I've followed this baby right from the drawing board. She's mine, Chuck, and I'm going to test now, her. Now, cool off, Ken. In the first place, she's not just yours. She's everybody's in this shop. A lot of sweat and money and brains has gone into making her. And I'll have plenty of interest in her, and if she makes the grade, we'll all profit by it. I don't want to take any chances with her that I don't have to. I've seen the report on your last physical. What about it? Nothing wrong with it. No, but if you compare it with the one you had a year ago, there's a difference. Your reactions aren't as sharp as they used to be. And for this kind of job, you know what that can mean. I know you're acting like an old woman. My reactions are good enough to handle anything that flies. You've never seen me do a thing to prove otherwise. Well, that's true, I haven't. I've never seen you fly the new ship. Well, just stick around. You'll see me fly it. If you don't like the job I do, tell me then, and I'll listen to you. She's my baby, Chuck, and I test her. You get yourself a new chief pilot. Now, look, will you take it easy, you hot-headed Scotsman? Just pull out of that dive and fly straight and level for a minute. You have to give it up. You forget you're not a kid any longer. It's caught up to you. I'm an old man in the air, and the air is for the young. I'm over the field at 30,000. Here we come. The damage is done. You're a lucky stiff who gets the fire. Give it up, give it up. The action's on the shot. Give it up, give it up. Give it up. Give it up. I can't. Give it up. We won't come out. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Lee Tracy, starring in the role of Ken Murdoch in the proudly we hail production Straight and Level, will return in just a moment for the second act. Registered nurses, the United States Air Force Medical Service offers you a great opportunity to serve your country and further your own career. Yes, you can become a commissioned officer with good pay and allowances while you receive postgraduate training in anesthesia, operating room management and techniques, nursing administration, and other fields. Nurses with special qualifications may train as flight nurses at the Air Force School of Aviation Medicine. For complete information, write to the Surgeon General, United States Air Force, Washington 25, D.C. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Ken Murdoch, we present the second act of Straight and Level. <laughs> Wake up. No, I, I won't. I Darling, won't. you're all right. You've been dreaming. Well, uh, where? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
That was one for the birds. I don't wonder. You fell asleep in the chair here. You were all cramped. Yeah, you can say that again. What time is it? Oh, it's about six o'clock. I fell asleep right after you got up and your shouting woke me. Well, I'll try to be more quiet this time. I got about time for 40 winks. You'll be in great shape to protect that plane. I'll test it, no matter what shape I'm in. Nothing in this world could stop you. That's right. Nothing. Well, honey, I'm off. Well, you ate a good breakfast anyway. Do you feel all right, Ken? Never better. Come on, give me a smile now. Just think, tonight we can go out and have ourselves a good time, and tomorrow we'll make some plans for the future. Future? Ken, what do you mean? Um, I mean, I mean, we'll, well, we'll go on that vacation with, with bells on. Oh. Well, be careful, darling. Remember, I have a world, too, and if, if anything ever happened to you, I'd lose it. I don't live up there, Ken. I only live here. Sure, kid, I know. Don't worry now. It's just another job. Here, look at me. You're the best wife a guy ever had. I don't deserve you. And if I've been oh, jumpy with you lately, well, it's been because of... I understand, darling. Now you better get going or you'd be late. Yeah. Funny, I, I thought it might rain today. Well, give me a kiss. Wish me luck. My love goes with you. No man ever had a better good luck charm than that. Keep her straight and level, Ken. You bet. I'll just put the horizon in a different place. Morning, Ken. Morning, Chuck. Looks like a good day for it. C-A-V-U. How are you feeling? Peachy. Why? You don't look so hot. Listen, we had this out before I started the test. Up till now, my my reactions have been all right, haven't they? Yeah, I know. She's still in one piece, and so are you. And that's just the way we're going to stay. I told you, if you found anything wrong with my flying this baby, you could talk to me, and I'd listen. Otherwise, leave me alone. Let me do my job. I merely remarked that you weren't looking too well, and you try and take my head off. Are you jumpy as a cat? Now, just simmer down a minute and listen to what I was going to say. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Well, what were you going to say? And if you felt like putting it off for a day, it would be all right. Put it off? Isn't that all your brass over there? They didn't come out here to have you delay things. Well, it's up to you. Well, there's no time like the present. You know, if I didn't have sympathy for your wife, I think I'd fire you. If I didn't know this place would go to pieces without me here to help you, I'd quit. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, do you feel like a cup of coffee? No, thanks, Chuck. I've had my breakfast. I want to talk to Max. He said he wanted to see you, too. I'll walk down to the hangar with you. You know, Ken, I've sunk everything into this. If she makes it today, things are going to be humming around here. And if, uh, for some reason, she doesn't? <laughs> that hasn't happened since, when was it, 37? Yeah, ha, huh. that one was a bird, all right. All she could do was flutter. I suppose we'd just start again, you and Mac and Marv and I. Well, those were pretty good days, now, weren't they? Yep, we didn't have a bean, just a lot of hope, dreams. We had the stuff to make them work. We've been making them work ever since. Wars aren't much good for anything, but we learned a lot from it. Hope this grow, too. You're worried, aren't you, Chuck? Well, I guess so, a little. Back in 37, there were only the four of us. If she doesn't live up to... She'll the... live up to anything. There isn't anything as sweet as that child anywhere. Well, you should know, I guess. I must be getting old or losing my grip or something. But it's all or nothing. And if we don't make the grade, a lot of people are going to be out of jobs next week. You really shot the works, didn't you? Everything I could beg, borrow, and steal. You make me feel like a heel. All I've been able to think about is the bonus I planned to get. That or we'll be without that bean again. Well, I'll be willing to bet you that bonus if she comes through with flying colors. Well, if she does, I think you and I should have a talk. What do you mean? Well, I need help, Ken. Someone who knows things inside and out like you. You mean give up flying for an office job? Now, don't take off. It would be a good job, a well-paying one. You wouldn't have to give up your flying, but you could step down and let some of the younger boys handle the rugged test. You could... Be put out to pasture to graze with the sheep. Why have you got to look at it like that? Because that's what it amounts. Now, look here, Ken. I'm not going to argue with you now. When you finish today's test, we're going to have a talk whether you like it or not. You're so blinded by your own stubbornness and pride that you can't see the runway for the trees. I'll see you later. Hi. Oh, hello, Mac. Will you 
you a check to shoot. Anderson tell you I was looking for you? Yeah. I guess I forgot about it. You know, someday I'm going to knock his block off. Sure. You and ten other guys. What's on your mind? She all set to go? She's all set to go, but you're not. Mm-hmm. What? What are you talking about? I happened to run into an old friend of mine last night, Doc Royal. We got to talking about this and that. I told him about the new plane, the test we've been running. I told him about what she's got to do today. He asked me who the pilot was. I told him. Then he told me. I see. He wanted to call Henderson right away to stop you. He said a terminal velocity dive would finish you. I asked him not to call Chuck. I said I knew you'd figure it out for yourself before you went up. And you wouldn't go up. I said anybody trying to stop you would run into trouble. And you'd never forgive them if they tried. Because you're thick-headed and stubborn and you've got too much pride. That's what I told Don. He said he'd leave it up to you or me. If you didn't come out of that cloud bank you've been flying around in. You got it all figured out, haven't you? I have. I still hope you have. I don't want to go out there and tell Henderson, but I will if you don't. Max, listen. I've got to fly this test. I, I just can't quit now. I know I've reached the end of the line. But I want this last flight. I've got to finish it right. Royal said there was only one way you could finish this flight. How does he know? Because he stuck some gizmo on my chest and he said, breathe deep. I've always had my luck. It's never run out on me. Won't run out on me today. It won't because you're not going to give it a chance. Mac, you and I have been friends for a long time. We've seen a lot of rough weather go by. We've always understood each other. Can't you understand this? Of course I can, you dope. But can't you get it through that thick head of yours? It had to end sometime. But not like this. Not like this. Well, how then? A headline in a newspaper, a lost contract, and Sally all alone. Up there, you don't have to think about anyone but yourself. Well, you've done it so long now you can't think any other way. Oh, Ken, look. I know you must be in a flat spin, but do your head, man. It's too late, Mac. It's too late. It's not too late till you climb into that cockpit, and you're not going to do it. Now make up your mind. Either you go out there and tell them, or I do. You wouldn't forget about this for friendship's sake. That's one of the reasons I won't forget about it. Okay. You win. I'll go tell Chuck. You do that, and then we'll go out and really do the town. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hold this thing, will you? It sure takes... Sorry, buddy. Blame it on the heat of the moment. So, sit, Ken. Right. You know what to do. Yeah. Where's Max? Oh, he got a telephone call. Well, all right. We can't wait any longer. Good luck. Thanks, Chuck. Now, don't take any wooden props. Up we go, baby. Up to the sun. Climb, you sweetheart. Climb. The only thing up here is freedom. And they want to take it away from me. Never. This blue space is my world. These clouds, my kingdom, and this, my queen. My queen of speed and light. There's no time here. Only the silence of the universe. Murdoch, in XK-1248. Murdoch, do you read me? Over. I read you, brother. Like a book. Murdoch, in XK-1248. XK-1248. Murdoch, come in, come in. Test altitude reached at 10-4-8. Uh, Might as well make it as neat and orderly as we can. And now, the time has come, the walrus said. Here we go, baby. Hold on to your wings. Down and down we go. If we don't make the grade, a lot of people are going to be out of jobs next week. He's all set to go, but you're not. But if anything ever happened to you... All or nothing. A headline in a newspaper, a lost contract, and Sally all alone. No, no. Leave me alone. Oh, Ted. Hold on before it's gone. Con Aircraft. Con Aircraft. XK-1248, over. And what the devil are you doing? Why didn't you continue the dive? Shut up. Get Richard's. 
tell him he'll have to finish the test today. I'm coming in for a landing straight and level. Follow the sun and chase the stars. To soar skyward and dwell in the lofty cloud worlds of upper space. To join the eagle and touch the hand of greatness with wings. Star Lee Tracy will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. You veterans who want to get ahead, listen to this. The United States Air Force needs thousands of trained men today, veterans of any service, as well as non-veterans trained in such fields as radio, radar, engine maintenance, weather, armament, camera work, and many others. And here's where your training and experience count. Veterans, if qualified, can now re-enlist with their old grade or better, skip basic training, and be assigned initially to a nearby Air Force base. You non-veterans, if you have technical training the Air Force needs, can get a grade that matches the skills you have when you enlist for basic training. Get all the facts at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Volunteer today with the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Straight and Level was written by DeWitt Cox. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Join us next week over the same station for Proudly We Hail, won't you? Travel with us to the Malay Peninsula for a fast-moving adventure story in the wilds of the Malay jungle on a besieged rubber plantation. Our play is titled Story at Tenderex. Hope you'll be with us. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>